Hey, Malabedi here. I hope you guys are enjoying your day. You can see Bitcoin here is consolidating right below that target we had at that $28,000 level. As you can see, we're just below $27,000 right now. And as we talked about in our video yesterday, by the way, if you're enjoying this content, remember to like this video. It shows your support. But we talked about Bitcoin consolidating at this higher range as we start to see the traditional markets and the precious metal markets open and we're going to be looking at those markets but more importantly we're going to talk about ethereum we took three trades yesterday and ethereum broke out it's seeing a 20 percent reversal from the recent bottom when looking at the eth btc chart but we'll talk about ethereum and other altcoins a lot of you guys were asking about altcoins and whether or not they're oscillators if you want me to look at any altcoins just put it in the comments below and i will let you know whether they're an oscillator or a degenerate a degenerate is a coin that has a half-life that can continues to decline and decay but an oscillator is a coin that will continuously over time keep up with bitcoin's price action but let's just dive straight into this micro analysis of what's happening you can see from that initial breakout from this ascending triangle where we actually have the previous weekly open right here and a cme gap at 23,795, we've yet to come retest this but we did top out right below that $28,500 level and so far we've been consolidating so as we start to see this hourly chart unfold the patterns are going to be very important to see whether or not we are forming a bull or a bear flag here but once again that retest of a previous breakout level is highly likely and the craziest thing about this chart is we've yet to retest the all-time high from the previous all-time high in 2017 right around that $19,798 level and if there's one thing I can tell you about technical analysis is anytime we break out of a major resistance we're most likely going to retest that resistance level at some point in time we saw that happen with gold if we pull up the gold chart you can see here interestingly enough I'm actually going to do some analysis that we did yesterday in our discord to talk about where we believe bitcoin will top out at at least in the temporary time frame but you can see here when gold eventually broke this previous all-time high we came up about eight percent to the upside before seeing that top and then we saw this come and retest that previous breakout level and i'm expecting this to happen with bitcoin as a matter of fact if you guys are in our discord the link is in the description below i sent this market update out today this morning i'm, I'm going to go through it it's very interesting and i'm going to actually dissect each part of it for you guys because this is going to give you a really good idea about what's happening with bitcoin dominance with altcoins and then we'll look at these crypto signals that we sent out yesterday you can see here two ethereum trades one of them already hit all of the targets and this one has a little bit more room to go and i'll talk about why we sent these trades out because there's a very interesting thing happening right now when it comes to altcoins but let's just read this together bitcoin dominance is seeing some resistance from a multi-year resistance line that dates back to the 2018 bull cycle and what i mean by that is if we look at bitcoin dominance here you can see on this weekly chart we've got this multi-year trend line that you can see has had one touch point here it's had a second touch point here a third touch point and then a breakdown gap and now you can see we've come up to retest this why is this important well for those of you asking for confirmation on whether or not bitcoin dominance is going to continue to increase or whether altcoins are going to see an increase in dominance what i'm watching right now is that 73.02 Bitcoin dominance level because that was the top here in September 2019 and for us to have come up as you can see with this candle high at 7205 but miss 7302 that could be bearish in the short term for Bitcoin dominance which would mean an altcoin season is highly likely but if we do form a higher high that could indicate that altcoins may continue to decline and so not only am i watching the bitcoin dominance chart but i'm also watching the others dominance chart because if we look at these three simple moving averages as you can see on this weekly chart we actually broke right through and sliced through the 50 100 and 200 week moving average and we've yet to come anywhere close to these moving averages and in the past you can see when we did break that it may have been a good opportunity to get an altcoins because you can see in october of 2019 from the previous start of the altcoin cycle we did do the same exact thing we broke these three simple moving averages but we immediately came up to retest it and eventually come and break back towards the upside but right now we've yet to retest this and i talked about this in another video if we look at what happened to the dxy chart here let me go ahead and pull this up for you you can see once we broke those three simple moving averages but we didn't retest it 
it then continued a bearish cycle for the dollar value. And so understanding that this retest is going to be extremely important and then watching Bitcoin dominance to see if we're going to form a higher high, I think is the critical point in which we can determine whether or not we're going to see an altcoin season. But nonetheless, when we look at Ethereum's chart, of course, you can see here, we saw this very bullish wick close yesterday on the weekly chart, and we had just come down below those two weekly moving averages. But now we're back in between, which in my opinion is extremely bullish. And it could have just basically have been institutions allowing Bitcoin to see a parabolic increase. And now it's over 42% above the previous all time high. And now that institutions have yet to pump Ethereum, they may take profits by instead of going into US dollars, going into Ethereum or another cryptocurrency and other altcoins to diversify their risk. Of course, if you guys watched our interview with Charles Hoskinson and his lead quant, he talked about the diversification of assets when it comes to institutions as the next stage of this market cycle because they want to limit risk. And that lead quant was actually from, I believe, Goldman Sachs that, and you know, he worked there for eight years or something like that. But all of this is very important to keep in mind. Let's just continue and go through this really quickly. You can see here it says Ethereum is recently decoupled from Bitcoin by catching a 20% reversal when looking at the ETH BTC chart, which closed a weekly candle with a very bullish wick, testing a multi year support line that dates back to 2017. And that's exactly what I wanted to show you guys here. If we look at Ethereum to Bitcoin and we look at this support line that actually does date back all the way to 2017, we'll actually pull up. A chart here that has more price discovery like the Bitrix chart. You can see I've got this line drawn out here. You can see from 2017, which basically is when we found more and true intrinsic value for Ethereum. Prior to that, the ICOs weren't really a thing, but then eventually once ICOs became a thing and then eventually IEOs and now the DeFi revolution, you can see this was a significant time for Ethereum. We've tested this once in the past, twice, a third time, and you can see we've come yesterday and we wicked into that and came right back up. To me, that's extremely bullish for Ethereum. And that's why we took two trades yesterday on Ethereum. And shout out to Adonis, who's in our Discord, for throwing ideas back and forth with myself and other community members in our crypto chat because it really allowed us to get a really good dissection of where we believe Ethereum and other altcoins are going. But you can see I sent two non high risk trades. We sent a lot of high risk trades for other altcoins because, of course, market cap is so low. But yesterday we sent these two trades, 702 and 680. I'll talk about exactly why I sent these trades out on the macro, because maybe that will be interesting for some of you guys. If we look at the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart, you can see here we had this trend line basically get retested and it immediately got bought up. And to me, that was an extremely bullish sign that institutions wanted to come in and they took capital from Bitcoin because this is the Bitcoin Ethereum chart and they allocated it towards Ethereum at that multi year trend line retest. And so that's extremely bullish for Ethereum. And if we pull up the ETH USDT chart, what you'll see here is we had this pattern here form and we had this resistance level on this flag sort of forming here. And when we pull up this chart here, what you can see here is when we initially came up and we tested this, we stayed in this higher zone and we started to come back up. And to me, that was extremely bullish, which is why we started to send those signals out. And so all of those signals were really sent out at this level when we started to come up and retest this. And so that eventually has broken out. Now we're seeing a retest of the previous resistance and that will most likely see a continuation of the upside. So to complete this market update and we'll move into what's happening with gold against Bitcoin, because a lot of people that believe in the Great Reset, for example, they're not really watching the Bitcoin to USDT chart because they don't care about the US dollar of Bitcoin or the value of Bitcoin compared to the US dollar. They do care about Bitcoin's value compared to gold because it's also another hard asset. And so we'll actually talk about a little bit of that here at the end. But this is what's most interesting about the analysis that the community and I did yesterday in our crypto chat. We wanted to determine whether or not Bitcoin has topped out at this current level. And what I mean by that is if we look at this daily chart, you can see the daily wick here was extremely toppish here. You can see we've got a red daily wick from yesterday. And when looking at this wick, you can see we did not have the chance to really maintain that upside for too long. And this could be a 
temporary top here just because this wick is fairly ugly when looking at it at least from my perspective being in markets for so long and that could potentially indicate a top so once we saw this wick we determined well what could we look at what other assets could we look at when it comes to market structure to determine where bitcoin may top out at and so this is where we did this analysis which is one of my uh, most interesting uh you know parts to this market update it says Bitcoin closed its daily candle with a top like structure yesterday, looking into the correlation between gold's recent top after breaking its all time high. Similar to how Bitcoin has broken its previous all time high, we determined Bitcoin moves about five times that of gold to the upside, which would indicate it top roughly 40 to 50 percent above the previous all time high, with gold finding its top around eight to nine percent recently above its last all time high before it came down. BTC currently has topped 42 percent before or compared to this previous all-time high. So when we look at the previous all-time high and where we're at right now, right around that 42% mark, interestingly enough, when we look at the comparison to gold, and I'll show you exactly what I mean here, and the reason I say that gold is uh, typically to the upside five times as much, you can see initially from that Bitcoin bubble, right, the initial bubble, which isn't really a bubble anymore, we saw this huge push to the upside, and then from that we came down and this is where we bottomed out right around that three thousand dollar level and if we were to take that to the previous all-time high that's right around 532 percent now when we look at gold gold has done the uh, very similar thing when it comes to market structure which is why i like to look at gold in comparison to bitcoin because i've talked about bitcoin passing a new all-time high since we saw gold pass a new all-time high because I said that the charts are so similar. You can see we had that sort of that gold rush here in 2011 and then we saw this bottom out and you can see gold in comparison to Bitcoin, it moved up uh, about 83%. And so when you look at that compared to Bitcoin, it's about five times as much movement that Bitcoin sees in comparison to gold. And so if we were to take that thesis and we saw earlier as i showed in the beginning of this video gold topped out around eight percent above its previous all-time high before coming and retesting that and then eventually coming down to that 250 week moving average it was right around eight percent so if we were to factor that into bitcoin then we're looking at a top right around 42 percent 41 percent and interestingly enough this matches our exact thesis where you can see we've topped out right around that 43% so far. Now, this doesn't mean it's a top, but I just want to point this out. Now, we can do the inverse here and look at what about to the downside because markets and assets will move differently when it comes to the upside and downside. You can see once gold found its top, it retraced about 15% over the next three months, allowing silver and platinum to make their moves away from gold. And looking at the gold to BTC historical downside, which is different than the upside, BTC typically moves about two times that of gold. Suppose we did top out temporarily at 28,422. In that case, we could see about a 30% correction, which would land us just below the previous all time high, which once again, I think is highly likely to retest that because you don't just break a previous all time high and don't come back to retest it unless this is an unsustainable market. But in my opinion, we will come to test that previous all time high at some point or another. It could be in the next two to three months, like it took that much time for gold. And you can see here it says, allowing for consolidation in a potential alt season while BTC trades sideways, which we know is when we like to see the whales come into the altcoins. That's when Bitcoin trades sideways. So it's a highly probable scenario, especially as we saw Ethereum immediately decouple from Bitcoin yesterday. So I hope this is making sense. If you're enjoying this, remember to like the video. I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. But yes, a 30% correction would allow us to test the prior all-time high around 19,798. Really, the target I would be looking at for a correction is you can see we've got this monthly open right here at the previous all-time high, coincidentally enough, right? And then also you can see that was also this major ascending triangle breakout, which we've yet to test. That to me is going to be a potential long opportunity when it comes to Bitcoin. And then you can see we've got that CME gap at 18,460. We'd most likely come and retest that as well. And then we look at this weekly 50 week moving average. If we were to do exactly what happened to gold, which, uh, you know, gold basically stayed at this higher level until this came to reach that previous all time high, then we're looking at a two to three month time frame of consolidation at this level. So, that's really what I'm watching. Now, this could all be invalidated if we continue to break that all-time high that was set yesterday at 28,400 and whatever that exact number was. And that would mean that maybe gold and Bitcoin are not going to look correlated. But I highly doubt that being that Bitcoin is digital gold 2.0 and all the similarities that comes with that. And then when you look at the CME chart, 
it's very rare that we see a weekly gap this big for Bitcoin. I mean, matter of fact, the last time we started seeing gaps like this was the previous top before we saw that short-lived bear cycle. But typically on a weekly chart, you don't see gaps, especially during this whole bull cycle. There was very little gaps. There was one small one here right at 9,735 on the weekly chart. I don't like to look at the weekly for gaps because typically there isn't gaps on the weekly. You know, when there starts to be unsustainable price action like this, you can see that's typically when we start to see a consolidation. So, you know, looking at the daily chart, of course, there's a lot of gaps down below. And I've got all those drawn out on this chart. If you guys want to screenshot this, but we've got a gap at 11205 and then finally a gap at 9665, which, you know, we can talk about that in a different video. But anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying this and I will end with this when looking at the gold versus Bitcoin chart Zhao against BTC. This is very important for those especially that believe in the Great Reset. Interestingly, we have formed a double bottom on the chart, which is indicating a similar destination compared to the 2017 gold versus Bitcoin chart. So what I mean by that is when we look at gold versus Bitcoin, interestingly enough here, this is when Bitcoin topped out in 2017. We're just now starting to approach this, but we've yet to approach this. So the question here is, are we going to form and I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments below. We'll wrap this video up because it is going quite long now. But are we going to form a higher low and that is bullish for gold and then we see a pump with gold or are we going to double bottom and then see that or this would be the craziest scenario in my opinion. We break this bottom and then we see further downside and that would indicate institutions are continuing to move money away from gold into Bitcoin, which is also going to be highly probable. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The DXY, by the way, has opened up as we saw futures market open. It's currently about 0.15% up. We're still in this little area where, remember, this DXY chart is extremely important to understand asset inflation prices. Um, and so if we see this break that 89.562 level, I think there's a high chance we see continued inflation when it comes to asset prices. And that includes real estate, rare collectibles, precious metals, and of course, cryptocurrencies. Um, but you can see in the past, this was a breakout level, as I've talked about in the past. Um, and then it also acted as a support here. And, you know, of course, this time around, they printed 20% of all US dollars this year. So we did break this. So the question is, are we going to retrace up? If we see that, we could see a big crash in markets, or at least a, a lot of correction going on in markets. Uh, but if we continue to the downside, that can indicate further inflation when it comes to asset prices. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot, but I think it was well served. And with that being said, congratulations to those that took the day trades yesterday for Ethereum. And I am out. Thank you guys. Snipers out.